So if we want to reflash the firmware in this control board, the first thing we need to do is we need to power the board down. And then right here next to our USB receptacle, there's a little black jumper that's stored. There's two pins down inside here, and this black jumper is stored just on the bottom pin. So what I need to do is I need to remove this jumper off the bottom pin, and I need to place, place it on the two pins. So I'm going to place that jumper right on those two pins next to the USB drive. Connecting those pins together with that jumper tells the board now that it's going to load firmware next time I power it up. So now I simply plug in my USB drive. And now when I power up the board, you see it didn't load the firmware? That's because I missed the pins with my jumper. So let me unplug power again. If you plug in your thumb drive and it doesn't load the firmware, it means that you didn't get your jumper on the two pins. Now those pins are quite small and they're a little hard to see in there. A flashlight sometimes helpful. I think I have the jumper on the pins now. Firmware's in. Now I'm going to pour, power the board back up. Now my thumb drive is flashing. It's loading the firmware. And the new firmware version is going to come up 7.1. So I'm going to unplug power. Unplug my USB thumb drive. Again, make absolutely sure that you remove the jumper. Again, it doesn't matter what you do with it after you are done here, but you have to take it off the pins. You cannot leave it on those two pins. Again, we can store it just on the bottom pin if we want to, or we can lay it in the bottom of the control box. It doesn't matter. So now we're going to power the board back up. 7.1 firmware, which is our monitored firmware, our current version of monitored firmware. BB flashing, it's scanning that blue bus input. It's going to give us an E1 error code because it did not find a monitored safety device. Even if I rescan the blue bus input, I press the learn button, it's relearning. It's still going to give me an E1 error message because this board now, again, requires the blue bus photo eyes. So I'm going to power the board down, connect my blue bus photo eyes, power the board back up. My blue bus photo eyes have just lit up. They're working, they're talking to one another. The board is again scanning the blue bus input. It's still gonna give me an E1 error message because my blue bus device has changed since the last time the board was learned. I press and release the learn button. It rescans the blue bus input. And two dash lines, I'm ready to operate. I did the examples here using the blue bus through beam photo eyes, which I highly recommend. I really like those photo eyes. But remember that on this board, you can also use up to two pulse input uh, devices, like an EMX IRB RET reflective photo eye. So we have options. But again, that's just a quick tutorial on how to reflash firmware on the 936 board. But main thing, remember that jumper. After you reflash your firmware, take that jumper off. Y'all have a great day.